No, you are you are fine. You're fine. We're okay. gonna just we're just gonna go straight off. But I feel like I should be doing something. If you're gonna be doing a get ready with me, I feel like I need to. That's the word. I don't I don't have a I have a, a drawer full of junk and nothing to do. Me too. That's upsetting. <laughs> um. Oh my! And now the drawer's now the drawer's stuck. <gasps> Is it actually? Yeah, because I've got too much stuff in here, Sabrina. Oh, toss it on the floor. That's what I do. <laughs> Excellent start. <laughs> All right. Looks like the drawer's just gonna be open now. Okay. I, I a nice little pop of red. Oh my god. I fixed it. Great. <laughs> and now we start. And now we start. It's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest, she's a voice actor, content creator, and tiny boxing powerhouse, Abelina Sabrina. Oh, all right. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Sabrina. Hello, Miles. Good morning. Good morning, slash whatever time it is for you. It is morning for you, isn't it, on, on the we West Coast? The same, we're not in the same time zone. It is we 9 We better not here. be. Yeah, I'm on the East Coast, love. Um, better not Thank be. you for joining me. I appreciate you coming in and, and uh, doing your get ready with me. Um, yeah. As is tradition on this podcast, the podcast of a generation, welcome. You you have chosen a drink for us this morning. Yes, okay. What is the drink? So I'm not big on caffeine, so this is probably like my cap for the day. But it is a iced matcha latte um, with oat milk and vanilla, sweet vanilla cold foam. But sometimes instead of oat milk, I'll put... Um, Instead of any milk, I put uh, vanilla sweet cream. Sabrina, that is not what you wrote in our message together. Well, no, I said a matcha latte with vanilla sweet cream. Yes, I have a matcha hot latte that is entirely sweet cream. Well, the flavor is the same. And no, I, it's because I had that yesterday. No, no, no. I had the one with all sweet cream yesterday, and they, the place that I also picked it up from today, um, I felt like they made it with too much sweet cream. So it felt like drinking ice cream. So that's why today yeah. I did with oat milk. No, no, no. But I also told you in the message that you could use oat milk and then just add like a little vanilla if you wanted right. to. And we talked about that because I'm, I can't do dairy. So why are you doing it? Because it's, I'm suffering for my art, Sabrina. Okay, well, do you have lactate? No, Did that doesn't work on me. It makes it worse. What? I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but I took a lactate once and it um, immediately hurt. Immediately hurt. Because you're supposed to like take it, eat it either with your first bite or like eat it right before consuming dairy. Right. Yeah. No. I legit. I huh. took it and then and then started and it just made it made me feel really bad. Oh my lord. So um so I'm suffering for my art today. Um, okay. And That's I fair. got I got the smallest possible matcha oh, latte too. with sweet uh, vanilla sweet cream. Oh and... my gosh, you're gonna love it! It, it tastes like a Lucky Charm. <laughs> it tastes like Lucky tastes Charm like lucky cereal, charm? but without the cat food pieces. Without the cat food pieces. All right, so here we go. We're gonna let's. You've already been drinking yours, right? Oh, oh yours well, is halfway done. Yeah. I was sipping it on my way home. It smells like a candle, Sabrina. Mmm. Listen, everybody's wanted to bite a candle now, every now and then. I get what you mean. It tastes like Lucky Charms. It does taste like Lucky Charms. That's ah! crazy. That's so sweet, dude. Is it it's okay? So is sweet. this your? Is this your? <laughs> this is your regular once a day type of? I need to get up in the morning. I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna have one of these. Oh no! I actually don't drink like a like a morning drink that's regular every morning but the few times that i do like go to starbucks this is my my go-to or a decaf vanilla latte which is also not like a good wake up drink because there's no so caffeine. is that I can't is, get caffeine. so has that always just been the case that you just nothing really you know you wake up you don't really need like oh i'd love a, like a glass of orange juice or uh, anything like that <sighs> No, I usually wake up and then I rot in bed for a few hours. <laughs> and then I start moving around. I don't I don't feel enough drive in my life to go get up and have a consistent drink every morning. Right. 
Is that, <laughs> is that, so you don't have like, but do you have a morning ritual? Apart from rotting in bed? I, oh, I was going to repeat it. <laughs> no. Uh, well, no, no, no. What I do is normally around 8 a.m., uh, I'll go take Eva for a walk. I try mm. to wait for roughly around 8 a.m. because more people are out, more cars are out, less coyotes are out. So 8 a.m. is kind of our, oh, our sweet yeah. spot. Coyote, because coyotes, coyotes are a real a real thing, right? I mean, I know oh, they're real. Yeah. I'm not saying that they're fictional creatures. I just mean that like they're they're a real issue in in California, right? Oh, absolutely. Because especially like where where we live, um, you know, LA is very like hilly, so mm. lots of coyotes, um, and they're just they're getting more and more brave. Which I don't blame them. We're the ones, you know, invading their territory, but mm-hmm. they'll come down from the hills like either at night or in the early morning and you could just see him walking through the middle of the street um a little residential street and so i gotta oh, eva sleepy so peacefully i gotta take care of her but like yeah i always wondered what i would do if i encountered a coyote on our walk um like so i'm always on edge and just like ready for it so i think i think do you I have something on you ass. like do you have something like bear spray but for coyotes is there something um, you could spray at them or something I suppose it is, but coyotes are also very cowardly. So oh, okay. I think, mm-hmm. so I think like if it happens, all I have to do is go like, ooga, booga, booga. um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, and that's why I try to stick to minimum 8 a.m. walks and I walk her three times a day. So 8 a.m., 12 to one to two at the latest. And then another mm. walk like at six to seven before the sun mm-hmm. sets. We got a is that quite a, is that quite a common thing for most people that have dogs in in California in it LA? It should be. It should be. But like, it isn't. Mm, like people these... are just like risking their dogs for an ease of walk or whatever. Um. Well, especially because I live in an apartment, so mm-hmm. Eva doesn't really have a yard to like run around. So that's why I take her out, and also she's fourteen years old, so I want her to keep getting her exercise. I don't mm-hmm. want her to ever become like one of those like fat little dogs that can barely hobble from you know one room yeah. to the other. Yeah, Eva needs to not be a potato. No, no. So she's she's more like a like a potato wedge, but not a full on potato. <laughs> uh, so that that's where we are. She's just In- a little baby, but you don't have a dog, huh? You have cats. No, I have cats. It's fine. Cats, cats, I can leave. I just leave them to to do their own. Yeah, you do don't their have own to business, walk those. Really. No, I just. I'd love to though. I tried to get my. I tried to get a Sami when I first got her. I got a harness because you can harness train cats to take them for yeah, walks and stuff when they're little. Mm, she hated it. Immediately yeah. hated it. Um, yeah. It was all too overwhelming. And I think it's because I live in a basement and it's just too quiet. So then to go out into oh. the world and everything's like super loud and ev- the wind is blowing. Blah blah. blah. She just doesn't like it. So now she, they just have it. the window open. Yeah, same. It can be overwhelming going from like super quiet to super loud city. Mm-mm. But um, she, so we just have the windows open and that's good enough for them. They can just hear, hear things from a distance and the wind blows and stuff. But in, in London, it. in London, we have, um, we have foxes. <gasps> Do you actually? Yeah. City foxes. Yeah. Yeah. City foxes? Yeah, they they live in the city. They don't like live out in the country and then walk in. They live under like ton- they live under the bridges or tunnels, or they have like little fox de- uh, what are they dens? Fox dens? Fox whatever they are in the city? But yeah, yeah, in London. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can hear them like randomly. Less so like proper downtown, like not not in the city of London. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a lot rarer. But you go out to like. West London, East London, you know, um, anywhere that there's like foliage more than in central London, which has like three trees, I think. And uh, crazy. right, yeah. Can people and keep there, there them? Was, like, Can they be domesticated? No, 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 no. They're they're no? quite they're quite sneaky. There was oh, I, I remember yeah. there was one time they like uh, uh, my 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 dad's old flat. Um. My, my stepmom just walked into the living room. I wasn't there at the time, but I had I know the story. Walked into the living room and said, um, "There's a fox in the bathroom," <gasps> and a fox had just hit, just climbed in through the window and was just hunkered down in the bathroom. And there, there was a, there was a oh god, what was it? I think it was like northeast London or something like that. Like a toddler got nipped by one. 
like oh, fox well, like, parents fault. climbed into the window and then let like, let like, bit bit a, to- a toddler in its crib while it was sleeping and stuff are they was... bitey are they bitey yeah, little guys yeah yeah they're bitey guys they also i don't know if you've ever heard a fox howl before but oh. it, if you don't know what it is it is the weirdest noise to wake up to at two o'clock in the morning in the middle of june really it's like what do they sound I can't like even i can't even what does the fox say miles <laughs> <laughs> wow deep cut Deep cut. I've actually never listened to that song. I'm just aware of the meme because internet, but mm-hmm. I've, you know, you, you see some stuff on the internet and you're like, I don't need that. I don't think I'm missing out. You know, like it was, like it, was the it was thing, the beheadings, like I'm good. Anyway, <laughs> 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 I, I got to tell you, I've had five sips of this. I don't think I could do more. That's enough. Wish you could trade. It, it, I feel like I have been drinking a candle and now the wax is like covered my tongue. Like, you know, that Simpsons bit where he's like trying to eat the really hot pepper and he Yum. covers his tongue in wax. Yes. Yeah, See, that's yeah, me it's with this. definitely one where when we're done here, you're going to want to like brush your teeth and really gargle and get it all out. Yeah. I mean, like I'm expecting because I went to um, the, the ROM the Royal Ontario Museum. It's like a history museum in, in Toronto. Ooh. And uh, and I ordered a, I ordered an oat latte and she gave it to me with regular milk and I didn't realize <gasps> until I'd finished it. I had no. a migraine for two days after that. It gives you a migraine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's That's it's awful. really it's really like not fun at all. So That's I'm like trying to like especially because I'm working tomorrow, I gotta like Oh God. <laughs> try oh, not Miles. to put myself out of commission. It's for the big Sabrina, drink lots of water. Yeah, uh, yeah, you've probably fine. switched I've, to water now. You didn't. You it's didn't drink fine. that much. Yeah, I, listen, I've got my giant metal <clears throat> canister for water. I'm, I'm good. I'm gonna yeah. switch over to this now. Maybe the cats will like it. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, but then I'll have to clean up afterwards. When? <laughs> well, cats can have. Well, no, they can have a little. No, they bit can't. Of dairy. They can't. They can't At do all? it. No, they're la- cats are lactose intolerant. That whole thing of Tom and Jerry where he's drinking milk and stuff, it's complete nonsense. That's very sad. Did you ever watch Aristocats? I think I yes. I mean I'm there... I'm I'm aware of it. I think I've watched it maybe twice in my life. It wasn't was... the it Dumbo was the one that I that I had on VHS, oh, which is no, problematic in general. Yeah, no, Aristocats, there's this scene in the very beginning because, you know, like the title would imply, it's these rich-ass cats. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that they ate in the beginning that just looks so amazing was something called creme de la creme de Edgar. And this uh, butler makes these cats, like this very special concoction of milk and like little spices. I think there's like cinnamon, nutmeg in it. I don't know, but it looks heavenly. Mm -hmm. And... He just gives it to the cats, and then this little rat comes out of the wall with with a little cracker, and he's like, "May I?" And he dips his little cracker oh, in the creme that. de la creme yes. de Edgar, and it just looks mm-hmm. so delicious. Yes, yeah, Ugh. I love. I like uh, 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 creme brulee used to be my favorite <gasps> dessert Yum. of all time. Favorite dessert of all time. I uh, and I can't do it anymore. Can't do really? custard. That, yeah, can't oh. do it. Well, I mean, custard isn't that mostly egg yolk. It's egg yolk and cream. Yeah. But I could do the eggs. <laughs> I can't, I can't I do like anything eggs. else. You know, I feel like eggs are so underrated in terms of like, I, I hate fried eggs, but um, a good oh, hard boiled egg eggs. or a deviled egg. Oh. Nah, 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 nah. I, I, I'll, I'll do a fried egg. For like fried eggs, like a, a full English breakfast used to be my hangover cure when I used to you drink. You know what? People shit on English food and, you know, rightly so. But rightly I so. love the, the <laughs> English breakfast setup. I do really like that a lot. Do, have you had a lot of them? No, because we don't have options like that in L.A. like at all. Mm-hmm. I think maybe if you go to like Harry Potter World in the morning, you might. But I don't oh, yeah, think but that that's, that's something here. That's universal. Here. That's universal's yeah. idea of what of what British food is. Wait, hang on. The amount of Brits in 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 la you'd think there'd be at least one place that does a proper full english breakfast but you know that they're not here to be cooking they're here trying to be actors and whatnot like they're not here to cook yeah but that's the listen okay as as it pushes up glasses as a british person 
our main thing is going to places and expecting and the food to be English. Well, yes, colonizing and <laughs> then expecting the food to be English. The amount of places that you go and there's the English part that is just like a pub and a cafe that makes the, the that country's attempt at British food. I have never seen an English pub. I only see Irish pubs in LA. I've never seen I mean, a place I mean, that tries close. to be English. They're they're kind of close. Irish Are pub they? is the closest oh. you get to a British pub if you if you were in the states or um, yeah or in Canada. But there, right. there's a couple of places in in um, in Toronto that are like british pubs and they just seem kind of like um uh, excuse me they seem kind of like um oh god that's the that's the dairy that is whoo you Jesus. felt it mm-hmm. oh my um, already for my for for the people at home that are british uh uh it's it's kind of like um weather spoons it's just very kind of uh cookie cutter cut and paste type of uh bar i don't know if you like um i know that there's a place that's like that in in the states i just can't remember it like a sports bar there's you know a, like yes, every sports called, bar is kind of like the same it's called like beanery something yeah yeah something, yeah, yeah, yeah something beanery but i yeah. know what you're talking about it's a chain yeah it's just they, they're kind of like cut and paste so in, in the uk it's called weather spoons and it's very cut and paste they all look the same they all have basically the same menu and what have you and that's not mm -hmm. that's the new british pub but a lot of the original kind of british pubs that were the culture have kind of shut down now because they can't afford to keep culture. up the yeah. culture the culture was going to the pub and being pissed that was it warm beer on a sunny afternoon warm. That was yeah that was the bit it was warm. it's not supposed to be but because we're british we tolerate warm beer mm. Warm beer because it's a it's a crappy old pub that doesn't refrigerate their beer properly was oh is the bit that's that's the the English thing the English thing the English thing exactly <laughs> did 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 the to pivot slightly did pivot. did you have to <laughs> yes that's how I say things Sabrina thanks no no, no I was making fun of I was quoting friends. <laughs> You haven't seen that scene from Friends where Ross? I have yes, of course. To... Of course. I... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, when you were doing the boxing, did you have a breakfast thing? Because I presume you had to be eating a lot of protein in the morning. So were you doing like egg, like egg yolk smoothies or whatever, or egg white smoothies or anything like that for your breakfasts? Uh, so I would go work out in the morning and so you don't want to eat something too too heavy before working out so what i would do is if i could do some hard boiled eggs i would um piece of toast with butter because you know i was trying to put on weight for the longest time because mm -hmm. I, I started at about 100 to 105 and i had to get to at least 115 mm -hmm. and so uh for breakfast but like i also didn't like the heavy feeling that you get from like a lot of whey protein so i switched to a, a vegan uh protein powder made mm -hmm. out of pea protein yeah. and so i would use that i would add a little bit of flaxseed chia seed and then um frozen fruits like strawberries mangoes mm -hmm. pineapples mm -hmm. and then a teensy weensy bit of creatine because i it's good for building muscle but i feel like it would make my heart feel funny i don't know but oh I, really the protein shake is what i would always for sure have so the creatine, do you, so do you think that that, is that like a reported thing, the creatine thing? I don't know, but I definitely notice a difference in my chest, like when I would take it, especially like if I had like, say two protein shakes in a day and they both have a little scoop of creatine. Mm -hmm. Like I just felt the difference and it felt like, cause my heart rate is already really fast. Like it does not take a lot of working out, like within 30 seconds of working out even lightly, my heart rate jumps to 200. So mm. I think maybe it's just my own hyperactive heart that doesn't do well with creatine. Right. But so. that, and that was, so that was after the, so you do two, one bef after the workout and then one before bed or, or what was the, what was the process? Um, I guess I was, I, I would just eat a lot like before dinner. So, cause protein shakes just get so nasty after a while, like towards the end, I was trying to do two, uh, protein shakes a day because I started losing weight because we were in uh, something called fight camp, which is when you work out multiple times a day to prepare mm -hmm. uh, for your fight. So I was working out six days a week 
multiple times a day. Um, and it was a lot. So I'm just burning like over a thousand calories a day. So mm -hmm. I had to, you know, consume more protein shakes to try to make up for it and eat a mm -hmm. lot more. Um, so yeah, my weight has just been fluctuating. And, and then I got sick the last two weeks before the fight. Oh, or, did you? Yeah. Well, like, I don't know if it was nerves or something, but I just constantly felt nauseous. Mm. Um, and yeah, the calories weren't staying in. <laughs> so it was awful. And it was that, it was that delicate that like just not being able to, to like, um, mm. uh, uh, throw the calories on all the time. That was enough to just knock you off. Yeah. Like the, the weight part and the consuming food part, it, it was awful. Like you would mm -hmm. think like, yeah, you have to gain weight. You get to eat as much as you want. But like when your stomach sends the I'm full signal, shoving any food in your mouth is miserable. It makes you feel sick and disgusting. Like I put my body through so much of this mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I mean, I struggle with the same thing. Like yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put on more weight. I've always been trying to put on more weight. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a six, four You're skinny a boy. boy. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really, I mean, you know, this is a first world yeah. problem to have, but it's very difficult to, to, to get over that feeling and, and like, cause you know, when you feel full, you don't want to do anything. Uh, uh nope. And I'm sure there's going to be people in, the, in, you know, listening, they'll be like, well, you should, blah, 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 if you just do this, that, and it's like, yeah, okay. But like, you know you what know. people are going to say, or not all, <laughs> all people, but you know what? Some people are probably going to go, why don't you just smoke weed? Have an edible. Like, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't know about you, but I personally am not a big fan of weed for my own body. Um, mm. It just makes me too anxious. Uh, every, I, very rarely, every once in a while. But Yeah, I, I, so I stopped drinking because I found that weed was more enjoyable because I wouldn't get a hangover. Because I used to get Lovely. hangovers so quickly, like half a glass of wine and I was immediately wrecked the next day. Yeah, I don't know why. Wine. Oh, I know, yeah. but the And then beer would also upset my stomach as well. Like, as Calories. soon as I started drinking beer, it Heavy. would just be like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then and then yeah, yeah. because of uh, because of the pandemic, my anxiety has just been dialed up to 11 for the past four years. And I can't I can't even I can't even go near anything that that affects my uh, my brain capacity, really. As soon as I start feeling slightly off in any capacity, I, I, I have a panic attack. Can't do it. Which is really boring. It makes me feel very boring uh, <laughs> at parties and what have you. I don't know if you feel that way, but it's just I feel very like, um, uh, like you know, the 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 designated driver when no one needs to go home. You like you're always the designated driver then. Well, yeah, because I don't drink, I don't, I don't uh, uh, partake. I, I'm I'm basically just there with a, a glass of water, saying, "Hmm, yes, this is fun." When was the last time he drank? Um, I think I had a sip of champagne at New Year's. Like really? I had like lit literally a sip of champagne at New Year's. I think I think that was it. Well, because alcohol, it does increase your heart rate. Like even though it's a depressant, like it mm. does have an effect on on your heart rate. So that could also probably feel explain you know mm. why it makes your heart do that yeah um, yeah it was uh I, I also had some um uh some bolognese that had red wine reduction but it wasn't reduced it wasn't food? yeah but it wasn't reduced that much and so you could uh, taste the wine so you could taste the wine in it and, and well and you could also like the wine was getting me um really yeah That's interesting yeah 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 and and i had Usually I had ways to cope with a panic attack and they usually helped. But because I was like feeling a little tipsy, it it like properly uh, 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 messed me up for like for like a good a good few hours. I just couldn't I couldn't function properly. And oh my that's, gosh. Yeah, I know. That's that's uh, that's the level of anxiety we're dealing with over at Camp Dompson. <laughs> I guess it also depends on what you're trying to tackle. Like, what's more severe, the anxiety or, or depression? Because yeah. I'm assuming, like, if you got anxiety, especially with COVID, there's a little hint of depression in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think no? I've really... No, I don't think I've oh. hit any kind of depressive states, oh, really. Good. It's more just like I can't... Yeah, thank God. I think it's more just I can't... Um, 
there are just things I can't do that I used to be able to do. Um, and, and things, things that are, uh, uh, things that are difficult that, that weren't difficult before. So that's, that's, that's been like a learning experience of seeing, of like kept being caught off guard and being like, oh, okay. So this is a thing that I have to like going to a concert. I went, oh, to, yeah. I, I went to see uh, My Chemical Romance. Not that I'm <gasps> an MCR. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took, I took my partner. Um, uh, she had a great time. She's, she's a big MCR fan. I knew two songs, but I was like, yeah, let's go to MCR. But um, I went there and I had to, I had to like leave and just walk around the inside. I had to go running around the inside to, to burn off some energy because I was just having a panic attack just being there. I've done that um, before. Yeah. So, so I think, I think I'm. Right now, I'm doing, uh, I'm just doing a lot of like personal boundary pushing, you know, to like mm-hmm. to get myself out of the out of the safety zones that my brain is used to, to try and just like make myself feel a little bit in control more and more. Which I found is just like what everyone says is like acceptance and and just kind of like showing yourself that you are safe in different scenarios. Um, yes, I, I would also say uh, one thing to try to remember in that moment, and of course it's easier said than done, is n- none of this has ever killed you before. Mm. You have survived every single one of these episodes. Mm-hmm. So, so the chances are extremely in your favor that you're going to continue to survive. And then from like a logical standpoint, I, I know everybody says like, oh, do the breathing exercises. It's good for your mental health. Yes, but also <laughs> especially in that moment, like by just slowing down and doing the whole like breathe in slowly for 10 counts, hold for 10 and then release for 10, like that will lower your heart rate very fast by at least 10 BPM. So even mm. keeping that in mind is something I think is helpful for experiencing panic because because what is a panic attack you know your heart races and Mm -hmm. and you breathe a little bit shorter and then you get less oxygen to your brain and then you just you're in that cycle so if Mm -hmm. you can at least physically affect one of those symptoms bringing your heart rate down a little bit it makes Mm -hmm. the other symptoms feel a little less severe yeah yeah i found the box breathing is a really is a really useful um it doesn't like it's not a cure but no it definitely doesn't like always fix how i'm feeling no but it definitely like um sorry my cats are fighting in the other room i don't know if you <laughs> do you want to go no 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 no. it's good it's good it's good it's good um uh i've definitely found that box breathing is good at just allowing me to regain some kind of control of my own yes. thoughts yes because it because often when you're panicking and you're trying it, it's like it's like drowning you're you're in a state of panic and you just you're you're flailing your mind is flailing mm-hmm. and you need to just like have that kind of okay i need to focus and just focus on breathing and then i'll stay above water and you might still be in the water but then at least your head is above the surface rather than underneath and you're struggling i like um, that and and i think that it's it is difficult to be, you know, a lot of people, well, just practice mindfulness. And it's like, yeah, okay. Or um, do those grounding techniques where you look for different colors and things. And it's like, well, <sighs> it's difficult to do that when you're, you know, in a plane, which yeah. is where my anxiety is, a lot of it that is based. Or, you know, when you're, when you're, um, you know, at a, at a club, it's difficult to be like, okay, I'm at a club. The music is loud. I better look for three things that are red. It's just that's that that no. doesn't it doesn't apply to a real real world scenario. Um, Have you been to so, a club lately? Oh fuck no! <laughs> <laughs> just Dude, the, the Sabrina. The, the thing with clubs for me is that I'm always the one that people use to find each other in the club. Oh, because you're the tall. They'll be like, "Yo, where are you? Oh, I'm a, I'm near the tall guy," and it's just like I'm not a signpost, guys. For God's sake. Do you- <laughs> Do you want to know something funny? Okay, because um, my my boyfriend is quite tall. He's six six, and so he's six um, six. Mm-hmm. Jeez. So, and he's somebody who's very um, kind of introverted. So yeah. he hates 
being so tall. And when we were like at a party, um, I don't know if you've ever seen, there's like these um, little platforms and then there's a camera that swivels 360 and you have to like stand yeah, in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he like refused to take a picture with me on that because he didn't want to be even taller because he was <laughs> worried that people might look at him. <laughs> oh, bless him. So th that is a real thing. Yeah. For, for tall folks. Tall, they don't, yeah. They don't well, love it. Yeah. But like do, as a as a chronically small person, as you are, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, how does, how does that make you feel as a chronically small person though? What do you mean? Well, like I his mean, height? Yeah, he's six six and doesn't want to be six six. And I imagine you're just like, you have no idea. I just, I, I'm, I'm content with my size, but I do wish that I could do more functional things. Cause like a lot of things aren't made for people, my height, like, um, like when I drive my car, my seat has to be pushed all the way to the front, which I think is mm. also a hazard. Like if mm. I were to ever get into an accident, like I'm right. The airbag. I'm too close to the airbag, yeah, but I yeah, can't yeah. reach the pedals or yeah. I don't know what the top of the fridge looks like. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, that's the same. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing, the thing I've found is that I stoop a lot to try and get in people's eye view more. Okay. When you stoop, are you bending at the knees or your back or your hips? Oh no, uh, neck and shoulders. So oh. like, I'll be like this, and then I'll. Sorry, this is not a good mm -hmm. conducive moment for radio. But if you're watching on YouTube, I'll be like this, and then I'll, 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 I'll look like a like a hawk or something, like a like a chicken or whatever, and just oh, um, push my a vulture, push, like a vulture. Yeah, I'll push my neck forward so that I'm mm -hmm. more in line with their view, <laughs> rather than or them I having to look up more. I've seen tall people do the wide leg stance to try to get a few inches yeah. and come down. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one. Okay. So I don't know if you saw this. Justin what? Trudeau did that in in uh, in Japan. Was it Japan? I think it was Japan. Did you see this? I think I know what you're talking about. Yes, Justin Trudeau, pr Prime Minister of Canada, uh, did this to. What was it? Shinzo? Who was? What's that? Oh God! This is where I, I start embarrassing again. myself. The 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 Prime Minister of Japan. Oh no, Shinzo Abe was the, pre the previous one. Anyway, yeah, Prime Minister of Japan was was quite short in comparison to Justin Trudeau, and so they shared a moment where Justin Trudeau did the wide leg stance, and he got he got uh, crucified online for it. What is the proper thing to do for tall people in that situation? I don't know. I don't, I honestly, I mean, it was for a joke, like it was a bit of a joke in, in the moment. They all laughed about it, but the fact that he did it with like some people, that's so disrespectful. How tall is Trudeau? I don't know. I don't know. Look it up. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Justin Trudeau is just over, just over six foot, I think. Oh, well, that's not even that tall. Yeah, he's six two. Oh, no, that's tall. That's tall. Yeah. Yeah. So he just, so he did, look, I feel, okay. So say, say you're in a picture with your boyfriend and he yes. does the wide leg stance for you. Would you find that offensive? He doesn't do that. He doesn't? No, he, um, for a picture, no, he'll stand tall. Mm-hmm. Because I think I put this in a caption on when I posted him once, but, mm -hmm. um, he, I asked him about our height difference one time and I was like, does it ever like bother you or annoy you like at all? Just cause of like, I don't know, like, like what you're saying, like coming down yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he goes, yeah, it feels like we're a circus. <laughs> he's like, we look like a circus. <laughs> and he meant it. <laughs> okay. So he likes I mean, looking a little dopey. <laughs> There's so much to unpack there. <laughs> it's like, what does that make me? <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. There's, I mean, because I dated a girl who was who was five. I think she was four nine actually, or five Ooh, foot. Or, no, four, tiny. four 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 eleven or five five foot something like that. So how was that for you? Difficult, very difficult for me. Difficult. What? Yeah. Why? Um, I just kept having like neck problems, and I just kept like having to <laughs> stoop down, and it was just really yeah. like, 
And we got looks on the street as well, which was weird. Like, a lot of people would be, like, eyeballing us. Really? Uh, Did yeah. she look very youthful? No. No. Oh, then I mean, I don't know it wasn't that kind of it wasn't that kind of weird look. It was just kind of like a it, it, I mean, mm, it was it was oh, a weird thing. You know, it could also be it could also have been from like taller women cuz sometimes tall girls don't like how a lot of tall guys date short girls cuz for tall really? girls it's like sometimes they're not interested in dating somebody shorter than them. Yeah. So the options are more limited. So mm. I can see, I've seen like TikToks and stuff of, of women who are a little bit taller being like, oh, where are men? Where are all the short girls taking all the tall guys? Stop it. Mm. That's, did you the ever thing? watch Tall Girl? No, I've heard about it on Netflix, right? <laughs> yeah. Was that it's, a thing? It, it's, 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 um, <sighs> It, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of like, I'm the, I'm the tall girl and everyone makes fun of me being the tall girl and I have to buy size 13 Nikes. And it's like, yeah, but they make, they make that size women's shoe. Like it, it, it kind of like, I don't know. I found that it was just kind of trying to make problems out of nothing. How tall is she? Then, I don't remember, but she, she's, she's made out to be very, very tall. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. I think I think it seemed like a bit of a bit of a, a non stretch. issue really. A bit of a oh, damn it. I was this close. I was you so close. close to getting it and I didn't I'm that was a wasted opportunity. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, it I, I don't know. I think I think being a being a tall guy I wouldn't rather be shorter. But then I'm I'm not I think six, you're at a good height. 64? Well, that's pretty good. You don't have to like oh, clothing options aren't crazy um, to find. Crazy. Like, well, even oh, for well, like my boyfriend, he, mm. I can't, I can't. It's very hard to shop for him. I tried buying mm. him a jacket one time because he's also like a little bit on the thinner side too. So mm. it's like you're long, but if I yeah. try to get you like a an XL or a double XL, like mm -hmm. it'll barely fit here. But then here it's gonna be so baggy. Yeah, too big in the How too big in the body, not long enough in the arms. That's a, that's that's been an issue for me since day one. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you, how do you find clothing? Like what you gotta works get it for tailored. You, you gotta get it tailored. Oh my that's do the that. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Although I found that long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he needs to go get it tailored. Not <laughs> you. You just buy him something you like. Here, go get it tailored. <laughs> Or get him a, a gift card for a tailor's or something for a present, oh. you know. Here you go. That's go get go idea. get your clothes tailored. You'll look better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like he looks I got him a jacket, but I did have to look extremely hard to find it. And mm. I bought one and then he said it didn't fit and then I had to try again. Um Yeah. So we're, we're trying. But... Yeah, it's 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 you just and you end up where you'll find two clothing companies that actually have clothes that fit. And then everything else just doesn't work. Yep. I found I found H and M works occasionally, but I have to go and try the clothing on, like, and then take it specifically. Ordering online is a waste of time because they yeah. none of their sizes are actually the size. They're always no. like the small will be different from a different run small. Smaller. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, uh, Club Monaco occasionally has some good stuff that fits. Mm -hmm. And then Uniglow, and that's it. Those are the three that that actually work for me. Everything else just doesn't doesn't work. God damn. Yeah, I know. Especially for for pants, even though there's like a number system mm. for for men's pants at least. Like mm -hmm. your your pants are hard. I can't even imagine for like tall guys. Like even for again boyfriend, his pant size is like thirty five by thirty six. I can't find that. I can't find that anywhere. I, I even type it into the stores online, and it's nope. They just well, don't they do, make them. They do have the tall, the tall sections on certain sites. Like Banana Republic certainly has a tall section. <gasps> oh, okay, perfect. I've always wanted to know about this. So the big and tall section. Does that mean you still buy the same size that they would buy in a regular section, or do you buy it like? It's not a separate sizing system. Like tall boys don't have a separate size. <laughs> XL at a regular yeah. place. Are you talking shirts or pants? Pants. No, no, no. XL at like a regular place 
will fit like an XL, whatever, like kind of baggy. But if you get an XL in the big and tall section, are you, do you still need an XL or should you just go down to L? Well, do you know I what I'm think, saying? yeah, no, I get what you mean. I think it, with pants, they use the numbering system. That so I don't I can get I, a little bit yeah, more. Yeah. So I think it's, I think, and also I don't think they call it big and tall anymore because I think it's just for tall people now. I, I, I still see big and tall the few places oh, that I've seen it. So it's like big then. and tall, then oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe yeah. there's bigger individuals. Yeah. I mean, my, I might be wrong. I'm just going off of what I've seen on, uh, like, Banana Republic and stuff, and I think they just they just say tall, but I might be wrong. But um, mm -hmm. in terms of, like, the sizing, I think it's... Yeah, it's just they add extra length to it, I think. And often they'll have, like, a model on the on the page, and you can just see what that model is wearing. I'm I'm so curious now. Yeah, that I mean, welcome to welcome to the world of trying to shop for yourself when you're when you're taller than six six foot six one something like that. It's it's not a great time. It's taken me a good good few years to find find the few companies that fit. Jack Corbet of NPR's Planet Money, he mm -hmm. did a story on this one time, I believe, because he's also like a tall, lanky fellow, mm. and about how it's just like it's just more expensive to buy clothing when you're tall, or not even just clothing, just to like function in the world. Not that we can have some sympathy for you tall folk, but no, I don't think it's not like the worst <laughs> thing in the world. But like, I don't know, sometimes like you have to pay more to just be able to actually sit in like. A, an airline um seat yeah. like just all these extra expenses that you wouldn't think of off the top of your head for like mm -hmm. people yeah like i was looking at because you know of course i was i was looking at uh trains across canada because there's a there, there's a there's a train that goes across the entire of canada from toronto to i think it goes to to vancouver that's um, pretty cool and the 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 first class one has a bed and a, a private cabin, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's the, pre the the second tier one, which has like bunks in a shared space across the train from another pair of bunks. And then yeah. there's the economy, which is literally a seat. Yep. And it's not even a big seat. And it's not even a seat that reclines. And nope. that is a that is a four Crime. four day trip, five day trip, six day no. trip. No. across in a in a seat and i <laughs> i don't think i would be able to last more than seven hours in those kind of situations so i i'm like well okay guess i'm not taking a train across canada then and you can you can walk about the cabin though a little bit right oh yeah you can yeah you're not option? confined to the seat for the entire time but like try sleeping like that i can't sleep up upright in a chair i really struggle mm. You, I mean, you fly a lot. Do you, do you struggle to fall asleep in in those kind of um, crappy chairs? I, I definitely don't sleep um, very often mm. on on flights. Not because I can't, but just I don't know. I just want to be aware. Last time I fell asleep on a flight, I was like somewhat awake but somewhat asleep. So like I was, yeah. I was like I was daydreaming. So I was like still in the same environment. I thought that I was awake, and then all of a sudden the plane started to go down. But oh, then God. I was just like, oh well, all right. This is this plane that has a bunch of YouTubers on it is going to be on the news. We're going down. But oh, then I snapped God. awake, and we were actually still in flight, which is awful to wake up from like a semi nightmare like that and still be stuck on the fucking plane. <laughs> Uh, uh. What, so what did you do then well nothing i just had to like force myself i'm like oh okay now i'm really awake now i gotta stay awake try to hope i think my flight had wi-fi so i just tried distracting myself and mm. i don't know sometimes i don't like falling asleep just because i have nightmares mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i uh, when I, I i flew to i flew to singapore which is like a which is like a 17 hour flight Oh god! Um, <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. It's seventeen and a half, I think. Wakala. And um, and I I found that uh, it was the entire time I couldn't sleep properly. Like I would, mm. and because I have flight anxiety as well, I was like I was nodding off and then like bolting awake because I had to be awake and just yeah. in case and blah blah blah. And Ugh. um, and that was seventeen hours. So and I I barely moved for those seventeen hours. 
didn't really eat much, didn't really have much water because I was so anxious that I just... You didn't want to go my... pee all the time. Well, no, like my system just shut down. My whole body was just like, this is the most traumatic thing I can think of. Don't move. Um, and then uh, I was so exhausted after all of that that my my vision started going blurry. Oh, my Lord. And, uh, and then when we landed, like I... I I had to, while we pull flight and I I had to ask for a trash bag because oh. <laughs> I was I needed to vomit so I was just like I've already vomited into my sick bag can I have a trash bag so we're landing as we're just vomiting it oh my gosh, that sounds <laughs> awful <laughs> and then like and we land and I'm like okay I'm down but I was still so exhausted yeah that like got in the car to get to my to to the place we were living uh the place we were staying and like in the car i was nauseous and then we got there oh. and i v threw up there again and so I then then i passed out and the next day i was great ne i mean if if you ever worry about like jet lag or anything stay awake 17 hours and vomit for four of them i cannot guarantee that you won't die but it will definitely stop your um jet lag i mean you didn't die so that's like a pretty One good hopes. Yeah. You didn't die. <laughs> You're here right now. I'm alive. We're that's... alive. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's just a good reminder. Like, you've survived it. Yeah. You survived it every time up until that's now. It. That's you it. You most likely will continue to. Yeah, exactly. I. That's a really good one. I hadn't, like, in the back You're of my mind, survivor. that's there. But that's not... Don't get us shut copyright, oh, Zarina. Shit. <laughs> oh crap. Yeah, no, that's a really good thing that that I hadn't really thought of before. Is that trying to keep that in mind that it's even if you're feeling a particular um, panic or whatever to well, I, to I remind that, yourself like, about that. Obviously, like f your feelings and what and whatnot like are valid and matter. But sometimes, like I don't know about you, but when I'm anxious and somebody tries to be like rational with me i'm like shut the fuck up it's not about rationality like this is just where my brain is right now um so it's kind of hard to reach that sometimes but if you can do it for yourself then i don't know it could help a little but yeah i i i, I hate sometimes when other people try to help me when i'm anxious and i'm like you, just, you don't get it you don't know no even if they do it doesn't matter at the time no because it's not they're not in not, it, it with you no. Yeah, and it doesn't fix it. No. no <gasps> have you, speaking of copyright stuff, have you seen a musical or heard of a musical called Next to Normal? No, I haven't. Okay. So it's kind of old. And this one, basically, I don't want to spoil too much, but it's a musical about like this um, couple and they had two children and one of them, their son, their golden boy died in a car accident. And so the mom... Um, she starts seeing him and like she she sees him and he's like, mom, I'm here. I'm alive. And like she talks to him and everything. But oh, the God. husband is like, honey, nobody's there. Mm -hmm. And so the whole time this thing is talking, talking to her. He's like, no, mom, I'm right here. And the husband's like, there's nothing there. You're crazy. And so it's about him, like kind of forcing the mom, the dad, forcing the mom into like getting medical treatment. He's like, clearly like you're going crazy or something. Yeah. Maybe it's the trauma. And so it, there's just this lovely song called you don't know that I absolutely adore where mm. it's just about like how she's really just like going through it mentally and just so unsure. And the husband is just like, I'm, I'm, I'm the real one. I'm right here. I'm here for you. But all you care about is just like being stuck in this state. Yeah. And it's so good. Oh, I'll have to show it to you after. Wow. Um, who? How did someone come up with that as a concept for a musical? That's so out of left field. Do you, Do you think you'd ever watch it, or can I spoil it? I, I mean, I presume it's not being performed anymore, right? Um, no, because it was like a smaller musical. Um, and I think like you could, I don't know, watch it on YouTube or something. But it's called Next what? to Normal. Next to Normal. I mean, so, I, let, tell me after the after the show. Ah, okay. Tell in case me after anybody. the show. In case, in case someone's like, "Oh no, I'm, I'm, we I'm gonna go and see a, an off, you know, an amateur performance of it, and I want to go in without knowing anything or something." Yes. You know? Okay. Then, then listeners, um, go on YouTube and just watch. There's like a version where they do it live for the Tony, for the Tony Awards. Oh and yeah. It's, 
a beautiful medley and it's it's so good it's called you don't know from next to normal at the tony awards and miles will watch this after because i want you to know <sighs> are you big into musicals i know you were you were you had a you had a moment of uh of losing it over heathers <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely was a, a musical theater <laughs> kid and all that, whatnot. Um, and then not as much lately, but uh, yeah, that that little that little spot in Heather's mm. from "Meant to Be Yours," "Meant to Be Mine." I don't know the name of it, but the thing is, I I, I don't know if I even have interest to watch the actual musical. But I just like the way that it sounds when the person performing <laughs> um, does that kind of like yelling scream. And it's just like so satisfying. And then when I posted my reaction to that, when we were on a call, Miles, I posted that on TikTok. And most people, you know, were just like, yeah, I, I yes. love that scene. And then other people were like, yes, this is disgusting. You are glorifying domestic abuse. I'm like. No, no. First of all, I don't even know what the musical is about. I was just reacting to that one clip. I'm listening to his voice. I'm listening to what he was directed mm -hmm. to do with his voice. Like, obviously, I don't condone that, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's the same as people like liking uh, the the relationship between Bella and Edward in Twilight, and some people being like, you know. He's a thousand years old. How can you d enjoy this kind of relationship? He stares at her all the time. It's g and, and some people are just like, yeah, there's just yeah. this particular scene also, I really enjoy or whatever. With Twilight, there's a certain nostalgia. So if you miss the bus, you fucking missed it. But like we watched that when we were, you know, teenagers. And when you're a teenager, you're like, ah, yes, I feel... I'm I'm an old soul and I'm not saying that it's good but I'm saying that it resonates with the <laughs> teenage experience you know like you think you want to be older like when you're a teenager and so yeah, you, you, you think there. you're more mature than you are and plus like this book was very oddly written but yes. like at the time you're like hell yeah so I don't know if I would have the same love for Twilight in my heart if I barely watched it now have you has it been a while since you watched the films? Oh, I think I've rewatched them all at least like once every year or two. Oh, it's oh it's a yearly tradition. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> and then you get sucked in for a little bit and you know the actors on screen are obviously older than 18, so yeah. it's like that's that's fine, but yeah, like that's but that's also like a, a theme in a lot of TV shows like in like fantasy stuff like this person they look this young, but they're actually hundreds of years old or, or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And so like, yeah, that's definitely like a controversial thing, but that's just, that's just been such a recurring storyline throughout the years. Is that good? It's, I don't know about that, but <laughs> it's what we had and it's what formed nostalgia in our brain. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have nostalgia for the baseball scene, I don't know what's wrong with you. Oh, copyright. Listen, that's yeah. that's okay. I'm fine. I mean, I'm a huge Muse fan, so I'm I'm fine with them using that track. Anyone listening to Muse is happy is is good in my book. You know, also Muse was such like a presence in the Twilight series, but also I really think that their all of their soundtracks were very good for the movies. I've heard that. Okay, mm -hmm. I I'm going to expose myself. I've not listened to the soundtracks that much, I got to be honest. I've only ironically watched the Twilight movies. Yeah. But like if you listen to the songs that are used, um if you like go look up the Twilight soundtrack mm. on on Spotify or New Moon, Breaking Dawn, like whoever chooses the music for these, they're, they're pretty cool. They choose some fun stuff. Yeah. And then that you know, informed what the the following ten years of your life, twenty years of your life, still yeah. informing today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you ever have like your cat when they're grooming themselves and they lift their little leg in the air? Do you ever go in for a high five? Uh, no, because I want to keep my hand. Oh yeah, cats. Cats, yeah. Although the <clears throat> my two cats, one uh, Asami is like that. Asami, Asami, if you if you touch her when she's not wanting you to you are destroyed bastion oh. is a uh, dollop and you can just pick him up and just like if you need to clean him you just pick him up and that's it 
Dada. You need to cut his claws. You just pick him up and you hold him, and he just he gets grumpy about it, but he's not going to attack you, Asami. Um, we have to figure out how to sedate her because the groomer that we took her to twice in the past two years is now like, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to groom her again unless she's that sedated. Bad. <laughs> So does that mean you have to do it? Uh, no, it... Oh, oops, I hit my mic, excuse me. No, uh, oh no, it just means that we have to, like... I, I think we just have to give her weed, to be honest. Ah! Just give her CBD and see if that if that does the job. Because I, I think there's some there's some problems with giving them sedatives unless they're actually being monitored. Oh, yeah. So we just have to find some kind of sedative that, that works well with her and keeps her kind of chill. Because I think she's just very... She's just an anxious cat, I think. I think she's just very on guard the whole time. Eva was recently prescribed an opioid. Oh, uh, <laughs> and that helps. The vet described it as it'll be like she had a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and does it seem like she's I mean, is she is she slurring her words and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's not allowed to drive. <laughs> Um, yeah yeah but uh it, it does like very much kind of like zen her out and also like the pill is like very tiny and i cut it into fourths so her dosage oh so she's getting little little bits she's getting little little bits because she has like some arthritis and some pain and i think that sometimes she's like scared that somebody's going to touch her in a painful spot um, so she'll like yelp and so she's just like on edge a lot so the vet prescribed her that and mm. it's great i think she's in like less pain when she takes it and um so like especially if i knew that like she needs to go get her nails trimmed they'll be like let's let's give you the the half because also mm -hmm. like you know they're bending her arms trying to reach certain yeah you know, toes and um, just in case i don't want her to be in pain well i'm sure i'm pain. sure they're like <laughs> i'm sure they're, they're good about it but oh she's not in the shop yeah for those listening to the podcast even oh, now baby. eva cam yes, is, is active now she's in the baby. shop there you go baby. Come on. oh she's coughing at me <laughs> she, she, look at her face miles i know she's very disgruntled Hi. right now she just she, eva just seems very <laughs> very uninterested Hi, she's like why baby. have you woken me up whomst has awoken the ancient one yeah <laughs> yeah have you woken me for a reason peasant or is this just a social call i think she's waiting for something to happen Nothing. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go back to sleep. I have her dog bed velcroed to the top of my desk, so mm. that way, whenever she jumps on and off, the bed doesn't slide. That's so. smart. Mm -hmm. That's Women smart. in STEM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I, we're, we're, I, I want to put. Um, mm -hmm. Asami wants to jump on one of these window sills in our in our apartment. Oh, no. And uh, and she keeps just like using the drywall as leverage to get up onto it because it's quite high. So there's just claw marks in the drywall. So I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna put a shelf in so oh. that she can jump on it and then jump up and then put does less damage on the. I think the that's thing. a good idea. I've been seeing lots of people who have cats, like friends mm. and stuff too, just like installing those cat shelves for the sake of them jumping around. And I feel like the cats probably love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it, if we if it was our place and it wasn't a rental, um, oh yeah, I'd maybe do yeah, like catch it up. Yeah, but you know, yeah, it's a whole ordeal, and then it's just like, well, do I want to be investing money in this if it's going to be something that some rando wants to kick me out because he wants to charge more rent or some nonsense? You know, true. My rent just went up by seven percent. Yeah, well, I moved because the last one oh, yes, of was two thousand five hundred, yes. and they try to crank it up to two thousand eight hundred for a little one bedroom. But now I'm in a three bedroom mm. um, with roommates, but like it's it's bigger, and they increased it from three thousand one hundred and fifty to three thousand four hundred something. So about three hundred. Well, that's so luckily atrocious. between like splitting it, yeah. it's doable. But that's like they could have increased it to 10% if they wanted to. Do they have any rent controls in in LA? Only for the older apartments. Oh, over a yeah, it's the same in Toronto. If you if you're mm -hmm. living in Toronto in a house that was rented before 2018, then then they yeah. can only they can only raise the rent uh past a particular uh, up to a particular point that's like 
set by the province every year. Mm -hmm. But if you if you live in an apartment that was rented or built after 2018, they can do whatever they want as often as they want. It's bullshit. Yeah, it's Freaking atrocious. Bullshit. Yeah, is is the the new place that you're in slightly better in terms of uh, uh, landlord f fixes? Because uh, I remember in your first apartment, the the uh, the the circuit breaker was painted over. <laughs> It was, honestly, I don't know where it is in this apartment. Um, eh, it's somewhere. But uh, this one is bigger. Mm. I like it. Maintenance is kind. And one of the other things is that, like, the apartment that I live in, there's multiple locations. So it's a chain. However, there's no on-site uh, management. Like, they're at another location. So there's just, mm. like, a sense of ease about that. Like, I don't – I mean, I'm not doing anything, but I don't know. It just feels weird knowing that, like, your landlord would always be there. And, like, I don't know. I've heard stories of, like, landlords, like, harassing tenants. Like, even before when I was younger in one of our old uh, houses um, when I was, like, a child. Mm -hmm. And the landlord, there were times where she would just show up and look through the windows. Or one time she saw that my mom's car wasn't in the driveway. But I was home in my room. And she just let herself in. And I was so scared to say anything. So I just hid under the blanket. What? I was like, what the fuck? So yeah, these landlords, they, they do Lord. be wildin'. Good lord. I I mean, I don't want to... <laughs> this is when it starts getting political now. <laughs> oh, fuck landlords. I'll get political. Fuck yeah, landlords. Do you don't provide housing, you fucking hoard it. What is it like in, in LA right now in regards to that? Is it, it do, you, do you see the winds of change at all no. coming from anyone? No. No, no. housing continues to go up, mm. um, especially like buying a house right now. It's impossible for the average working person unless you somehow inherit housing or something. Regular working class people, you're not getting a house in LA, especially yeah. with interest rates right now. It's like 7%. And if a house is like, minimum a million dollars even for a small single family teeny tiny house you're starting around a million dollars seven percent on that is a fucking lot for like a 30-year loan which is the average it, it's like your mortgage payment is going to be like seven eight thousand dollars a month like no nobody can afford that that's i fucking no. i hate it here no no i agree and it's uh, you know what i saw recently it was advertised to my to my instagram was um uh tinder but it's to find people to buy a house with. Mm, I don't like that, but I could see that being a thing. I, I know lots of like friends are buying houses with each other. I've seen that before. One of my friend is, is in the process of doing that. Yeah. Cause also like, I don't know, sometimes your friendships are a little bit more stable than like your relationships, which is mm -hmm, like who traditionally mm -hmm. people would buy houses with. Um, also, I will say, I think you've already commented on this before in general, but like I've recently ventured into another side of the internet a little bit and <laughs> it is paying me a lot more than content creation sponsorships have ever had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so proud of you for that. It, That's it's great. It's been about three weeks. I, I'm on Fan House now, listeners, um, which unlike only fans and fansly and, and those other sites a uh, fan house doesn't allow nudity mm -hmm. um there's a lot of things that you cannot do um it's not like a very like sexual uh thing um it's like a place for people to support you and you can be like a little suggestive but like you can't you can't show anything and i yes. especially don't Pe people are subscribing over there anyway and mm -hmm. and you know compared to like a, lo a lot of other platforms the revenue split is 90 10 which is lovely compared to OnlyFans, which is 80-20, Twitch, which is fucking 50-50. Not Google, even 50-50. YouTube 50. is 60-40. Yeah. No, I wasn't getting 50-50 at Twitch. Have you heard, uh, and I know, because you have, if you don't know, Sabrina also has a YouTube series, Deranged DMs. Go watch yes. it. Um, have you been getting, I'm sure you'll, you brought this up on a previous video as well, but in case people haven't seen that, have you, have you gotten, um, like legitimately negative criticism about it and how have you about what about about doing the kind of posts that you do on fan house and those kind of things and do you have a <laughs> uh, you haven't the only person who has been a little bit mean about it was my mom mm. 
And so we got into a fight and we didn't talk for about two weeks, which is so strange for my mom and I, because we talk like multiple times a day on the phone, like while I walk my dog. Um, right. So we started talking again. Did she have like, legit? I mean, we don't have to go too much into it, but did, did she have like legitimate like concerns that you can understand from her perspective? Well, it's not even that she's that conservative. I think it's just the, the stigma and she when I told her, cause I told her in the first couple of days, I was like, Oh my God, mom, I made this much. And mm-hmm. she was just like, at first she was amazed by the numbers. And then she's like, okay, now you're done with that. Go back to doing your other stuff. I just don't understand why you're not doing anything lately. Like that's for people with no talents and, and you could do, you can do better things. And I'm like, Oh, Okay, but even when I was like making sketches and commentary videos, like those require a lot more work, and I I don't get as much enjoyment out of making sketches lately. Um, and this pays way way more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I mm-hmm. think she's just scared that it's going to lead to um, posting stuff that I probably wouldn't ordinarily post, and it would just I would keep going down that rabbit hole. So I think that's what she's scared of. But I'm assuring her. That I'm not. And like I even told her the TOS of Fan House and she just didn't want to hear it at the time. And so now we're just it's going to be those things where you just don't talk about it. Mm, The sweep under the rug type deals. Yeah, but it's like she's um, retiring soon and she bought a house in Mexico near my sister. And so it's like a brand new house, but it's completely empty. So it's like her daughter is me and my sisters uh like we're gonna be like furnishing that for her as like a retirement present so it's like you hate this now mom but it's how i'm <laughs> buying your furniture i think she'll yeah. get over it then yeah i think though i think the one thing that i've seen people bring up before is about like oh well aren't you worried about if you have a a job or something and they do a social media search or or those kind of things mm-hmm. um and do you do does that come up does that i mean because i think you've had such a uh of oops i hit the mic you've had such a a, a varied career so far you've done so many different <laughs> things I, I mean that in the best respects you've you you have a lot of of uh what's the term strings in your bow i don't know if that's the right term you have a lot of you know quivers and you think arrows so. in your quiver, whatever and so i just wonder whether that's ever something that you thought about have you have you um, well, it, again, it's really not even that lewd on the website mm-hmm. itself. So I don't think it's like a bad thing. Even like mm. the website doesn't look like that at all. Um, yeah. And I, I don't think it's going to affect me really mm-hmm. in the future. And plus, the most successful thing in my life right now is my online platform. So I think in terms of like, I don't know, other jobs it would probably be in relation to like online social media stuff so i don't think that would be something that would hinder me if i ever wanted to go into politics maybe but i feel like i wouldn't want to win over the conservative prudish people who would actually like look down on that anyway yeah Um, and that seems to be that seems to be a thing that's becoming more and more prevalent in politics anyway as as mm -hmm. As people get older and more people get into politics and technology becomes more of people's lives as they've grown up, um, mm-hmm. like I think there was, there's been a couple of stories of politicians where you know they they've they've made tapes or they've made you know content in before yeah. they got into politics that uh, they have either apologized for or not apologized for, and I think that's going to be like a that's going to become more of a thing. As we as as technology gets on, listen. If Donald Trump gets to grab women by the pussy, <laughs> I get to have a safe for work fan house. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The, Donald Trump has set the bar so low. Yep. Right. Mic drop. Down there. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. That's, okay. That's how I feel. I, and that's a good place to be, I think. I completely agree. Yeah. All right. Should we answer an advice question, Sabrina? Yeah, I think we got time for like one or two. Funny enough, yeah, I actually what, have to record deranged DMs hey, shortly after this. Hey, wonderful. <laughs> All right. Well, we got, we got one. This is from Jess. And Jess asks, how do you stay personally motivated to keep going creatively when it seems like no one cares? change change something 
change something? I would, I would change something and, and I don't think I do it the healthy way. So I don't even know if this is like the best <laughs> advice, but <laughs> I'm not very good at sticking to things. Um, yeah. So I don't know, like first I was doing YouTube for a few years, then I switched to taking Twitch streaming a little bit more seriously. And then, mm -hmm. um, an audience there, I, I, I would, I don't know. Um, what did I do next? Then I started doing more like off the internet, but still somewhat internet-y mm -hmm. ventures. Like I got to be on like the food network and then yep. I did, you know, um, uh, creator clash so boxing so just constantly adding something where it's still like somewhat relevant in your sphere but something that's different enough to change what your everyday looks like I yeah think yeah i would agree with is that at least okay i think it's chasing the chasing that inspiration i think mm -hmm. doing the things that that um that you get excited about only reason i'm doing the podcast is because i'm creatively bankrupt in other areas and i feel like this is what i should do next this is fun i think this is a fun no, I think it, it is good to change up uh, your routine because even like I've seen this with like a lot of other YouTubers or even creators or even celebrities where like they stay in a certain lane and then they they hit these like number milestones and then it's like, OK, you hit that milestone and how long are you going to be like happy with that? Mm -hmm. Like you, you need something else to do. Yeah. If if you're able or, or at least talking in this content creation sphere. um, I know some people, and I've certainly enjoyed this at periods of my life too. Some people, they just, you know, they want to go to work, clock in, do the job and then clock out. And then the rest of your time is absolutely yours. And you don't have to think about work anymore. We're like content creators. You don't get to do that, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of other perks that you get instead. So yeah. other people, you know, you just want to clock in and clock out and then live your life and have that full separation. That's amazing too. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the 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 thing that that grabbed me with this question was that when no one else cares, and I think that's mm. that's a tricky one, especially for for stuff that's online. You know, if you're yeah. doing if you're doing content creation, it is inherently for other people in some regard. You want there to be an audience for the thing that you're yeah. putting out. So I guess, I guess, from your history, how did you mm. find the thing? How do you find that balance of like? doing the things that that creatively grabbed you but then also like ha like how did did you find that you had to kind of be okay this is just for me and and this video that i'm putting out people are probably not going to like it but i really wanted to make it kind of thing oh i've done that before plenty of times yeah. cuz i think you have to make the stuff that's just for you cuz if you just are only making things for the algorithm for mm. other people like it comes across in your content um, that there's mm. just like not a lot of love there, but w when no one else cares, if, if you have like an audience of no one, um, go be part of other people's audience of content mm -hmm. that you do like, or is similar and like interact there and make friends. And that's where you slowly start to build a network. And then you'll get some people that organically care. Um, so in, in that way, I think that's how you can get that's, some people uh, yeah, to care. I agree with that. That's how I got to where I am is and that's how we became friends is just by the mm -hmm. the whole the whole process of just being involved in communities yeah. and, and building that up. Um mm -hmm. and then and, and in terms of like the doing it for other people and stuff, it's just be proud of it. Yeah. Like put put your put your put your hundred percent into it and then, you know, if it finds an audience then great. If it doesn't, then at least you made something and that's that you're really happy with yeah and then like, and yeah not not all of your content is gonna be able to have that much of your own personal love and effort but you know just don't abstain from it if you're only going to try to churn out what like other people want to see what advertisers want because i'll admit i've definitely put content out there that i've had zero passion for because of of a sponsor because I, ha I had to pay mm -hmm. my rent and my bills mm -hmm. um, like that, that does exist. We all do work that we're not the most excited for, for the sake of surviving. And, and that's mm -hmm. okay too. So in terms of content creation, if you are able to like make stuff for yourself, do it. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> just be, be happy with the fact that you're getting the opportunity to make something that you are excited by. And if you're not excited by it, move on and do something else. Yeah what he said exactly good answer sabrina i love that we're doing so well 
All right. Is there anything you want to plug before we go? We've already plugged everything, but if you want to plug away, um, go for it. Sure. If you want to follow me on any of my platforms, I'm at at Abelina Sabrina. Or if you want to follow me on Fan House, it's also fanhouse.app slash Abelina Sabrina. Or you can listen to our podcast that I host with Gabby Bell, who is a commentary YouTuber called Deranged GMs, where we invite creators on and we pilfer through the dusty graveyards that are their DM requests because you guys send us some weird shit. <laughs> That's a fun one. <laughs> But thank you so much for having me on, Miles. This is super fun. And I'm sorry that the drink wasn't to your liking. I um, can't. I can't with it. If you I'm have sorry. a child I, in your life, they might like it. <laughs> like, I've I've barely touched it. <laughs> oh. oh, it looks like a algae swamp in there. It does. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you, Miles. All right, we'll be back next week. Bye. <laughs>